Have you ever pre-ordered a game and thought, boy, I can't wait to play this game at launch with no issues. And then launch day arrives and you can't even get past the title screen? And the reason this happened on the first week of Payday 3's launch is because the game is always online. So when the servers exploded for the entire launch week, many heisters weren't able to play the game, even solo, because the game couldn't connect to the servers. And that's just one of the problems plaguing Payday 3. Now, I'm not exactly the most picky person, but coming from 10 years of Payday 2, I, I gotta say, the UI is shit for Payday 3. And I don't mean the in-game UI, I mean the menus. You can't rename loadouts, your selection of gear is extremely limited, the social tap is trash and isn't efficient, the favors are a lame system in comparison to the pre-planning phase in Payday 2, and there's so many more issues as of right now. And not to mention they have this new C-Stack currency, which is like their, their fake in-game cryptocurrency, haha <laughs> funny, which doesn't have any uses right now aside from getting like these iconic type of weapons and like I guess like mass or cosmetics. And that currency has issues in itself, which I don't really care to cover right now. The level system is completely dependent on the challenges you do in-game. So if you haven't been paying attention to the challenges, you're gonna have a hard time leveling up. Especially if you're like me, who just mindlessly runs through heists with friends and randoms. Oh, and in regards to the matchmaking and lobby system, lobbies are timed. So your friends have five minutes to join the lobby before the heist automatically starts. And there's an invite only at lobby option, but you can't invite your friends for some reason. So it serves as a solo lobby essentially, which is extremely stupid in my opinion. Or maybe that's on me for playing it on PC via Game Pass, but who knows. All I know is that the game uses their own servers and login, essentially, so I should be able to invite all my friends using their Nebula tags and a social tab. But once again, I cannot. Oh, and there's another kicker. You do not stay in the same lobby with your fellow heisters after the heist concludes, friends included, so everyone gets thrown out back into the main menu after every single heist. Oh yeah, and guess what? Payday 3 doesn't even have voice chat, so if you get a team running in pubs, you can't even use comms to like communicate with them except for using just shouts or typing in-game chat. And anyone who's played any online game knows that in-game text chat can be unreliable for randoms to actually communicate with. Such a mess. As for the heists themselves, they've been pretty fun for me honestly. There's only 8 heists, but it seems like there's a variety of ways to play them and challenges to be done with each one, plus they're decently packed heists in the previous titles release usually with a similar amount of heists, so it's understandable as to why. Especially since these heists offer more scale than the ones before. Also, the perk system was uh, revamped, and I don't hate it so far. I haven't gotten very deep into it though, but my current stealth setup right now is working pretty decent. So, I got no complaints out of this moment. The only problem for me is leveling up since, well, I've got a bunch of challenges to do since I've been doing nothing but like stealth mostly. And I haven't even looked at the challenges much, honestly, so I got some uh, work ahead of me. Now, from a gameplay perspective, Pay 3 is actually really solid, with a few small exceptions. Plenty of options while unmasked now, new hostage options, pickpocketing keys off civvies and guards, updated ragdolls from Pay 2, interactive minigames for lockpicking and such, and there's just generally more involved gameplay. The concealment meter is completely gone from the looks of it. However, you still have to be careful about being detected. Bots ping guards and cameras when you're doing stealth this time around, so at least you're doing something while you're doing all the hard work. And all this wrapped up in a nice little bow at the death of the diesel engine from Payday 2, as Stars Breeze adopts Unreal Engine 4. So the game should be more stable than Payday 2. Ho hopefully. And the devs said they're going to upgrade to Unreal Engine 5 post-launch, so expect that sometime within the next year or two. That being said, going loud is both fun and painful since the fights feel a bit more reminiscent to the payday of the heist. You don't have a lot of ammo, the cops will drop a bunch of ammo, and you have to be mindful and use cover more or else you'll get dropped pretty fast. At least in the early game. I'm giving all this from the perspective of someone who's done most of the heists kind of stealth, and a very small handful that I did loud. And I'm only about level 12 right now, so yeah. So all in all, I'm pretty torn. I'm having fun when I'm in the game, like playing it, but there's so many issues I have with the game itself that it just hampers the experience. And I know the devs are paying attention since they do those dev streams and they constantly take questions on Twitter and such and concerns from fans on uh, their, the, the platforms, but if it's anything like Payday 2, it's gonna be a long while before things actually get ironed out. The devs also have a roadmap uh, for upcoming heists and content, 
and they're seemingly planning for DLCs by the end of next year 2024 and they're already selling a season pass. Personally after the whole launch fiasco I don't feel comfortable at this time getting the season pass for the game but I hope that changes in the future following updates and a few quality of life changes. At least I hope my opinions on the game change over time and that this video eventually feels outdated in relation to the state of the game. I really enjoyed Payday 1 and 2 so when I heard Payday 3 was going to be a thing I was generally hyped and it sucks that the game came out like this and I honestly think it could have used some more time in the oven before launching but honestly seemingly at least Launching a messy product and fixing it over time is the new norm for gaming nowadays with all these broken launches with years of patches and major updates. It's making games feel more like a long term investment that may or may not lead to the promised product instead of simply launching as intended but at a later date. But of course there's a lot behind the scenes of that ideology. That's for another video. Or not. I don't really care right now. For now I'm going to do some prime time gaming on some cyber funk and maybe work on the next videos. So yeah, remember to sub, follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and if you like the content, you know where to find me. And I'll see you real soon. Take care.